and welcome to a World Pipeline Spotlight with Denso North America. I'm Elizabeth Corner and I'm Senior Editor of World Pipelines. I am joined today by Ron Raffoon, Denso ARO Specialist. Ron's extensive career has seen him provide consulting services on anti-corrosion coating selection, new product development, field inspection and coating application training on a global scale. Ron has held multiple senior positions at leading field joint protection companies and has accumulated broad knowledge in the corrosion prevention industry. He continues to impact the pipeline coatings industry by leading standards development groups in AMP, formerly NACE, and introducing innovative solutions for pipeline repair and corrosion protection. Denso creates bespoke and off-the-shelf solutions that provide enduring protection against corrosion and chemical attack to buried and exposed pipes, valves, fittings, steelwork, marine structures, tanks and concrete bunded areas. Its product range includes hand and machine applied tape wrap systems, viscoelastic coatings, liquid epoxy coatings, heat shrink sleeves and chemical and corrosion resistant tank linings and coatings. So for 90 years, Denso has been a world leader in providing innovative and permanent corrosion prevention solutions over hand tool cleaned steel surfaces, whilst reducing applied coating costs and meeting the most stringent health and safety requirements. From sub-zero environments to extreme high temperatures, its range of products are capable of withstanding the toughest conditions, as well as proving to be cost effective and maintenance free for many years to come. This spotlight session will discuss Denso North America's recent article for World Pipelines entitled Protecting Pipes During Pullback, written by my guest Ron Raffoon. In this short interview, we'll talk about the article and we'll go on to discuss some related issues. Now, the article in question is published in this year's Coatings and Corrosion issue of World Pipelines, and it describes key considerations for protecting pipelines and pipeline coatings during HDD pipeline installation. Ron highlights the ways that a pipeline can sustain damage during an HDD pull. The article considers how current best practice can be improved upon and introduces a protective outer wrap technology for preventing damage. So Ron, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about the article. It's my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Uh, those of you who watch our spotlights regularly know that we always start by revisiting the article that was published. So perhaps you can describe for us how you came to write about the topic for World Pipelines and briefly why the topic is of importance to the pipeline industry today. Of course. Well, um, I don't know how the, the industry is in your backyard there, but uh, the pipeline is always expanding. It's constantly going forward. And in population dense areas, when they put pipeline in the ground, it's not done in the traditional method where they dig a trench and then they gently lower the pipe into the ground and then they cover it up with, you know, specifically selected backfill to make sure that the pipe's well protected and, and you know, treated well. Uh, instead, that pipe's put into the ground by means of HDD, horizontal directional drilling. Um, and that allows us to put pipe into the ground without digging a trench. So what that means is they're typically doing this in high consequence areas, places that the population is very dense, uh, where there's buildings, homes, roads, uh, under bodies of water, things like that, um, because they can't get in there to dig a trench and, and put the pipe in the ground. And as amazing as that sounds, it's not without risk. Uh, and so this article... The intent is to explain some of those risks and specifically the ones that are related to the protective coatings. Fantastic. Now, uh, that's right, because in the article, you established that pipeline and pipeline coating damage during HDD installation is, in fact, inevitable. So how do pipeline owner operators typically deal with this damage? And I'm interested in how they square away that ine inevitable damage to assets. Okay, uh, that's a tough question. But first off, I, I should say that when it says the HDD damage is inevitable, that doesn't mean that every single HDD is going to have damage. Uh, it just means that there's so many that are done that there will be damage on some of them. Okay, so I have to clarify that. Um, but the industry has some general design best practices that they use uh, that, that they try to mitigate damages on HDDs. Most of those are focused on the pipe itself, not really the coatings, um, but they use these be best practices 
uh, and and they're they're doing their best. That's that's why it's called the best practice. But we're talking about drilling a hole in the ground and dragging a pipe through it. You know, we don't get to decide what we're dragging it through. Mother Nature made those decisions for us long, long time ago. So the conditions facing the pipe during the installation cannot be mitigated. Um, in this article, I present one of the mitigation techniques that is offered by Denso. Their product, Denso Bore Wrap, is designed specifically to withstand many of the issues that the coatings will have to endure while they're going through the installation. Super. And are there conditions where bore wrap cannot be used due to things like operating temperatures or any different application requirements? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very common question. I get that all the time. Um, and it's really because mostly people don't understand uh, how the concept of this product is. Um, because Borap is used to protect the coatings, there's this common misconception that Borap is part of the coatings or even a replacement for the protective coatings. But that's not the case. Um, pipelines already have tried and true coating systems they use to protect from corrosion. Uh, in some places, like where I'm at, that's fusion bond epoxy. But in your neighborhood, it's most likely a three-layer polyethylene coating. Um, those systems, they're great and, and they're they're useful. And those are the systems that are important to be able to withstand the operating temperatures. Those are the ones that are going to protect you from the, the corrosion. Bore wrap, on the other hand, is there to make sure that those coatings stay intact. Um, you know, during the installation... You don't want the anti-corrosion protection to be destroyed. So bore wrap's job is done when the pipe's installed, meaning that the operating temperature of the pipe never even comes into play until bore wrap has already performed its task. So with that being said, um, there's really no operating temperatures that are a consideration for bore wrap. Realistically, the only temperature that has an impact on bore wrap is the pipe temperature, the, the surface of the pipe, and the air temperature at the time that bore wrap is installed. So if those conditions are below 5 Celsius, bore wrap will take a very long time to cure. Um, but if you use some external heating or hot water during the installation, uh, potentially use some antifreeze or even apply uh, the coating on or the bore wrap on in a climate controlled hooch, which they do quite often in cold temperatures, um, you know, you can put it on in a colder environment. You just have to make sure you've got the steps in place to do it. Okay, so bore wrap is an additional layer of protection for this specific application method. Correct, yeah. Uh, and, and for some of those people who are out there reading the industry um, guidelines, uh, it would be considered additional mechanical protection. Are there times when you, you wouldn't need bore wrap? So... There's definitely times when you don't need it. Uh, I know you weren't expecting me to say that, <laughs> but uh, yes, there are many, many times when you don't need it. Um, and, and it's because there's so many different factors that come into play when you consider uh, what you need for additional mechanical protection. Uh, for instance, I live in Houston, right? If you have a hundred millimeter pipe that's getting pulled in on the coast here in Houston, the coast is super soft. It's a very soft, moist, uh, you know, clay and, and loam. Um, and there's not a whole lot of hazards in the ground. And if you were going to pull something that small through that kind of environment, and you're only spanning, say, 200 meters, uh, with those factors, chances are you probably don't need the additional mechanical protection. I'm actually working on a white paper right now that's going to be done for the Australia No Dig Conference where I'm developing a method to be able to calculate when and how much bull wrap you should actually use. Fantastic. Okay, now we talked a little bit about this already, but I wanted to focus on best practice. So in the article, you mentioned both API and PRCI best practice. Can you tell me more about the ways in which these guidelines might fall short? Yeah, I, I won't tell you, you know, how each one individually falls short. I think they're both great uh, organizations. I think they give great guidelines. Um, but with the current guidelines, um, they either don't apply directly to the coding or they're specifically just about the design and construction process. And when they do address pipe coatings, uh, they're kind of dismissive of the coating damage and simply suggest that 
where the coating has failed, they'll just apply cathodic protection. Now, I'm no CP expert, uh, but I certainly know a few. And from what I've learned, protecting an HDD with CP isn't as easy as they make it sound. So um, even the best designed CP systems can fail and coatings are your first line of defense against corrosion. So the best way to fight corrosion is to make sure that your first line of defense is intact, especially when we're talking about having it installed and having damage before you even start beginning the, the operation of the pipeline. You know, at, at that point, when day one, when you start up a pipeline, your system should be intact. And that's what this does. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit more about the Borap product itself and what it can do, um, its capabilities. Um, anything you can tell me more about that and maybe anything you can talk to me about in terms of testing or trials? Yeah, so if you're talking about testing and trials, um, this product done, has done quite a lot. Uh, Borap was specifically di designed for use in HDDs. So that means every step of its creation was specifically designed for this use. And we tested it uh, for the rigors that an HDD is going to, to face. So the components that we tested, we tested them for their resistance to shear, abrasion, impact, and gouging. I've, I've taken to calling this my SAGE test, uh, you know, for, for shear, abrasion, impact, and gouge. And, and most of the systems that are used in this niche, they refer to them as AROs. In fact, that's that's what you referred to me as when you introduced me as an ARO specialist. Um, and it's it's just become the norm. Um, but you know, when you're talking about ARO, it's specifically about abrasion resistance. But every HDD faces abrasion of some sort, right? The current systems hold up well against abrasion. Standard FBE alone is is very abrasion resistant. Uh, but then they throw AROs on top of that. You know, all the coating systems are fairly abrasion resistant. The real damage comes from gouges and impacts to the coating. And in some cases, depending on what kind of coating system you're using, um, you know, softer things over girth welds and stuff like that, those are very prone to shear uh, issues when you're talking about dragging a pipe. So bull wrap is specifically designed with this concept of the sage protection coating system in mind, rather than just ARO. And because of that, we've tested over and over in third party labs and in real life situations. Um, and, you know, I, I've been doing this a while. I don't know if I've seen another ARO system that's done as much testing as Denso has done on their bull wrap. Um, you know, they've done it in multiple countries with, you know, multiple uh, testing labs. But most importantly, they've done it in real life scenarios where they pulled a pipe through pipe coating didn't make it. I mean, it was bad. And then they wrapped it with bull wrap. And when they repulled it, uh, it almost looked like there was no potential for damage. I mean, it came out like almost flawless. So we've, we've done it in third parties, uh, in laboratory testing, but most importantly, we've done it in real life. Fantastic. And can you talk a bit about application of the bull wrap? So how does it get onto the pipe? Um, is it easy to do? Um, anything you want to tell me about application? Yes. Yeah, so we made this as difficult as possible. No, that's, that's obviously not the truth. Uh, we, we know that bull wrap is almost always going to be put in, in the field. Okay. It, it's, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, they're going to be putting this on in the field. And because of that ease of installation was another driving factor when we designed the product. So we don't want contractors to have to mix anything or require them to saturate the fibers in the field. Uh, we wanted the process to be quick and easy. It, it actually takes longer for me to explain how to put it on than it does to actually apply a roll of bull wrap. Um, the, the system's simple. The fibers are pre-saturated. Uh, they're stored in a bag. Once you open the bag, the roll is wrapped around the pipe while you're spraying it with water. Water is the activator, so they're not dealing with dangerous chemicals either. I mean, it, it's a very safe system in that manner as well. Um, then they compress the product with Denso poly wrap. They perforate it with this little perforating tool so that the, uh, product can actually breathe and, and cure out. Um, and in good weather, the, the product's ready to do its job in like half an hour. So it, it's a very simple system. And to close off our discussion, I suppose what I want to know is what is the risk of not adopting this type of advanced wrap technology during HTD installations? And are there other ways that you could bring similar results or are there limitations or constraints to the bore wrap product as it stands? 
So the risk is actually very straightforward. Um, not using it means that the pipelines that are underneath our feet are going to have damaged coating. Uh, damaged coating leads to pitting corrosion, which is far worse than general corrosion. And HDDs are inaccessible. By their very nature, they're put into the ground in that manner because they couldn't trench and, and they couldn't dig. So the pipe can't be repaired. Uh, that means that either the pipeline will need to be decommissioned before its full life cycle, or the HDD section will need to be replaced, or the pipeline will be operated until something catastrophic happens. Um, all three of those options are very expensive. And for some people, that it could also be devastating. So the industry's come up with various best practices in the design of HDDs. You actually mentioned a couple of them. Um, and they've been using those mitigation methods, which they're very good. I mean, obviously having something's better than nothing. But like I pointed out earlier, we don't get to decide what's in the ground. Um, you, can, you can plan and plan and plan, but until you face it, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. And so those alternatives uh, in the design have proven to be insufficient still because I continue to see coating damage regularly. I'm not going to say every day, but pretty regularly. And uh, it isn't limited to a particular market. You know, similar stuff to Borap has been created globally by a number of companies, which tells you that this is not an isolated issue. It's not an issue that's related to only one pipe coating. It, it's, a, it's a global thing and people are identifying it. So are there alternatives? Um, kind of, but not really. I mean, the alternatives are you use a system that is designed just, you know, for this application, um, something like Borep. And Borep is, we, you know, Denso has done a good job. They've made the solution easy to use. Um, they're a global force so that it's accessible everywhere. Um, the next step is simply to have the pipeline operators adopt it and protect their assets while at the same time protecting the communities that they serve. So that's that's how I, I see it. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to talk to me today, Ron. It's been lovely. I'm happy to do it. I, I think that anytime we can explain what's going on in the world of, of coatings to um, contractors, end users, uh, anybody who picks up your, your magazine, uh, it's a great thing. I agree. Now, before we finish, I'd like to remind viewers that you can read the article again online if you'd like to. It's called Protecting Pipes During Pullback, and it's found in the Coatings and Corrosion 2021 issue of Well Pipelines. You can access that for free by heading over to wellpipelines.com slash magazine, where you can sign up to receive a physical or online copy of the magazine. So thank you so much, Ron. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.